Hello. In this section, we'll learn about neural networks and deep learning. First, we'll look at a simple shallow neural network to get some familiarity with how they work. We'll practice with the Keras library to build a song genre identifier and revisit the spam detector from section 2.2. Then we'll look at larger neural networks known as deep learning and apply what is known as a convolutional neural network to identify handwritten mathematical symbols. Finally, we'll revisit the bird species identifier from section 1.6 and use deep learning to produce a much more accurate identifier. Let's start with a brief introduction to neural networks. Neural networks, which were originally called artificial neural networks, are inspired by actual neurons found in animal brains and other parts of the nervous system. Neurons are connected to each other and receive and send impulses through the network. The top left image shows the components of a single neuron. The top right graph shows how a neuron fires. It's all or nothing. When the neuron gets enough input from its neighbors, it quickly fires and sends a signal down its axon to each forward connected neuron. On the bottom right, we see actual neurons in a brain. A human brain has about 100 billion neurons, altogether having about 100 trillion connections. It's worth noting that the neural networks we create in software have at least 1 million times less complexity. Most of the neural nets that we design are feed forward and fully connected. This means that each neuron connects to every neuron in the next layer. First layer receives the inputs and the last layer gives outputs. The structure of the network, meaning the neuron counts and it, their connections, is decided ahead of time and cannot change, at least not during training. Also, every input must have the same number of values. So images, for example, may need to be resized to match the number of input neurons. The number of neurons in each layer is that layer's shape. Each individual neuron adds up the values it receives from the prior layer. Each connection from one neuron to the next has a weight. When adding the inputs, the inputs are multiplied by their respective weights. Each neuron also has an extra input called a bias, which is not connected to any other neurons. Once the weighted inputs have been added, an activation function is applied to the sum. There are several common activation functions. For example, the hyperbolic tangent, which shape is shown here. The output of each neuron is whatever comes out of the activation function. The connection weights in a network start random and are adjusted during training. The purpose of training is to examine hundreds or thousands or, or more of example cases and adjust the network's weights until the network is sufficiently accurate. After training, we have a network structure, which we defined ahead of time, and all the weights that were learned during training. Now the network is ready to use on new data outside the training set. Training proceeds in batches, which are several training cases are sent through the network and the outputs called predictions are collected. Then the loss is computed for each batch, which is the measure of the overall error. The number shown, 1.752, is completely made up just for an example. Each weight in the network is then adjusted depending on whether and how much that weight contributed to the overall loss. With very gradual adjustments, it should be the case that when examples in this batch are visited again, predictions will be more accurate. The network is often trained over several epochs. By epoch, we mean all the training data has been processed once. So 10 epics looks at the same training data 10 times. We often segregate 20% or so of the training data as a validation set. These are data that we don't use during training and instead only use to evaluate the model after each epic. We want the network to become more accurate, which is the same as decreasing loss. We want this to be true for both the training set and the validation set. So this set of graphs shows this ideal kind of behavior. But if the network is designed incorrectly, for example, it has too many layers, the network may overfit, meaning it performs very well in the training set, but poorly in the validation set. This is bad because ultimately we want to use the neural net on new data from the real world, which will probably be a little different than the training set. We use a validation set to see how well the network performs on data it didn't see for training. 